Hi, welcome to Best Drink Recipes. I'm Eli Mountjoy. This is actually our second craft spirit review, and it's going to be on none other than the Beehive Gin, specifically Jackrabbit. Now, just to go over a brief history of gin, it was the preeminent spirit for a millennia, effectively. Uh, gin is made from a base spirit, the same as vodka, the same as whiskey, the same as all of those things. But what distinguishes it is the juniper. And the juniper berry is, um, you know, comes from the tree. It gives it that piney, that very specific, that very uh, identifiable taste for gin. The Dutch kind of developed this, and Geneva is a Dutch word. And, you know, over the course of, the, of hundreds and hundreds of years, gin became the drink for many, many people. In the age of gin, which was, you know, between uh, 1700 and 1800s. Men, women, children drank up to half a liter of it a week. That's a lot of gin. And I'm sure it didn't taste as good as what this is probably gonna taste like. People just loved gin. But gin is made from a bunch of different things and what makes this specific, and it's on their bottle, is um, the juniper, of course, every gin has that. But also this has sage and rose petals. Usually gin does have quite a few different um, botanicals and herbal things inside of it that give it its specific flavor and everybody's got their recipe and part of that for them is hand macerating a lot of these things which gives it a very rich and um, distinguished flavor. I'll use the word distinguished. And on the back you can see this is uh, the 13th batch of this particular gin. This is um, this is 90 proof, so it's, a, you know, usually gin is about 80, so this is a little stronger. This is uh, distilled and bottled in Salt Lake City, Utah. So with that, why don't we go ahead and open this, and we are going to try it just as it is. We're not gonna put it on ice, we're not gonna mix it with anything just yet. A little bit later, we'll show you a couple of cool craft cocktails that you can use to uh, enhance an already tasty gin. And so with that, Let's crack open the Jackrabbit Jet. All sealed, beautiful. I almost don't want to break it, except I want to try it so bad we're going to. All right. Already I can smell that piney juniper identifiable smell that comes with all gin. It smells sweet, it smells sweet to me though. This is not going to be a dry gin. I can tell that already. It smells kind of nice. Let's pour some. You can see that the juniper, all the other botanicals, even the rose petals, the, um, the sage, has not colored this at all. It's, um, it's indeed very clear. It's nice though, it smells sweet. Let's do it. Hmm. Nice amount of pepper, nice amount of spice up front. Uh, but it's not overwhelmingly spicy. In fact, it is very, very honeycomb-like. It has a citrus, citrus kind of a, like a lemon peel to it. It's nice, my, my, my mouth is watering and saying, do it again. So, okay, let's do it again. I could almost drink it just like this. I have to say I'm pretty impressed with this gin. Very clean, very sweet, very balanced. Mm. I could sip this like a whiskey or a scotch or a cognac. It's nice. Now we're going to make for you three different specific craft cocktails to show the versatility of this jackrabbit gin and what it can be used for. Our first cocktail that we're going to make with our jackrabbit gin is going to be the old fashioned, the gin old fashioned. For that, of course, we're going to need our jackrabbit gin. 
We're gonna use two ounces of that. We're gonna use four dashes of our Angostura bitter. One sugar cube, or if you don't have a sugar cube and you just have uh, sugar in the raw, you can use either a bar spoon scoop of that's worth. Or you can use half an ounce of simple syrup if that's what you have as well. We're gonna need our muddler just to uh, macerate and grind it all together. Our bar spoon to stir, and um, you need to have a peeler, or in my case, a knife, so we can get our uh, lemon peel off. So first, we're going to put in the sugar, in this case, our sugar cube. I like to put the four dashes of Angostura bitter right on top of that, one, two, three, four, just to soften it so that when we um, mash it together, it becomes, it's a little easier. It's, we're not fighting it as hard. You can either pick it up like this and grind it, which is what I like to do, or you can just do it right on top, however you like it. In this case, we'll do it just like this. And because I put the Angostura right on top, you can see it came apart really quickly. And then we're going to add this because we want that citrus to really infuse itself when we put the gin in. And what I like to do is just express some of those oils, get them in, and go on the inside, just like that. And now, the jackrabbit gin. Two ounces is right. I'm gonna put in two rocks or two cubes about that size. If you've got smaller, smaller ice, you wanna be careful because it's going to dilute itself too quickly and your drink isn't going to be as delicious. So I'm looking at about this size. This is about right. If you've got larger than that, you can use just one. I'm gonna hold the base. It helps me not warm the glass with my hands while I stir this together. And we're just basically getting that sugar and bitters throughout the gin. You don't have to go too long for this, but about 30 rotations, 20 to 30 rotations is about right. I would say that's right. So it should look a lot like this. Almost looks kind of like whiskey, but I bet you it tastes different. Let's find out. Mmm, that's really nice. A lot of layers in this. I definitely am getting the balance of the citrus, the bitters, and the sugar. And that gin is still prominent. It still has that very honeycomb-esque sweetness to it while still retaining its juniper roots. Mm. Very nice. That is the Jackrabbit Gin, old fashioned. The second cocktail we're going to make for you with the Jackrabbit Gin is going to be the classic Aviation, which is a personal favorite of mine. I love this drink. And something tells me that this gin is going to do really well in it. So for this, we're going to need two ounces of our, in this case, Jackrabbit Gin, followed by three quarters ounce of our freshly squeezed lemon, three-eighths of our maraschino liqueur, another three-eighths of our creme de violet, which will together create three-quarters of our sweetener. And our garnish is going to be this uh, Luxardo, or in some cases, maraschino cherry. Up to you. We're gonna put it up in our coupe, and we're going to shake it. So first, two ounces of our jackrabbit gin. In you go, perfect. Now, three quarters, lemon. Followed by three eighths each of our maraschino and creme de violet. And before we put this in, let's go ahead and add some ice and shake this up. Perfect. We're going to double strain 
because we don't want these little ice particles continuing to dilute our drink during the course of its enjoyment. So in you go, and you should have a nice color just about like this, and that's of course the creme de violet. And the coup de gras, the cherry. And in goes the cherry. Well, let's try this. Bottoms up. Oh man, this is me all night long. The balance of this is incredible. Usually the maraschino and the creme de violet create a, a nice balance, but in harmony with this kind of uh, honey-like gin, it makes for a really beautiful, beautiful cocktail. Incredible, incredible. This one is highly recommended. The Jackrabbit Gin Aviation. Our final cocktail for you is going to be the Jackrabbit Gin East Side. And for that, we're going to use two ounces of our Jackrabbit Gin, three quarters simple syrup, one ounce of our freshly squeezed lime juice. We're going to use two cucumber medallions that we've sliced and a pinch of mint. By a pinch, I mean three or four uh, mint sprigs. And we're going to, as you see here, make a mint flag mint cucumber flag as our garnish. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So we'll set that aside for the time being. We're going to muddle all of these together and we're going to do that in our small shaking tin. So first I'll put our simple syrup followed by our lime. And before we put in the gin we're going to want to muddle. So let's put our two cucumber medallions followed by our pinch of mint and macerate this up. Go ahead and break it up so we get all these, the essence of the cucumber and the mint inside of our drink. It's pretty well essential for the flavor of this drink. There we go. Now let's add two ounces of our jackrabbit gin. some ice and shake it up. Superb. And just as in the other ones, we're going to double strain. Right? And for the garnish, here's how we create the mint cucumber flag. You can see I have the top end of the uh, mint sprig here. Sometimes you can slap it to open the, uh, the oils. Beautiful. And I'm going to take the very center of this cucumber medallion and just pierce the middle like that to make a beautiful mint cucumber buoy, if you will. And I'll set that right in the center. And that way, this. Um, the mint is right in somebody's face as they take every sip. So, let me demonstrate. To the east side. Classic cocktail that has spanned more than 100 years, and when you taste this, you know why. This is a cocktail that you would make for somebody who says, I don't like gin. Oh really? Make this for them. Boom, instant gin lover. Mmm, beautiful. And you really get that mint to come right up in your face every time you take a sip. That's another beautiful cocktail supported by the lovely Jackrabbit Gin. There you have it. I suggest you make one. Cheers. When you taste it, when you smell it, it just feels good feel good when you drink it. You should be able to find this for about $30. I would say if you see this on the bar or on the shelf, wherever you are, try it. It's really lovely.
That's Jack Rabbit Jim. I'm Eli Mountjoy with Best Drink Recipes. Thanks for watching. See you on the next drink.